Welcome back. This is Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Coach's Corner with eyes on future NBA prospects. Who's going number one? We're talking a little Jalen Green and Cade Cunningham. Of course, we do have to mention Jalen Suggs, Evan Mobley, Jonathan Kaminga. It's not a sure thing who's going to go number one. But if you have a top five pick, you are very, very lucky because it looks like you're going to have a great player in a future all-star on your hands. It's one of the best drafts that I've seen at the top in some time. We want to start with Mr. Cade Cunningham. And to a lot of people, he is the number one player in the nation or a prospect. Yeah. Averaging 19.5, 6.3 rebounds, 3.5 assists. He's shooting the three ball at four two five on five cents a, a game. And as you can see, the, the stroke is smooth. Um, he has a patient, patient game. His jab step, as we see here, a little Jimmy Butler, two directions is beautiful. Um, he's got a nice little mid range uh, game. He's very, very patient. He uses that big frame. He's six, eight, two twenty, And it's, He's bulldozing. He's a point guard, and he's there. He goes finishing in traffic. Um, he's a general out there. Yeah. He starts his offense. Uh, he gets to his spot. He's very, very patient. Uh, he utilizes the pump fake. He uses his big frame. He's got a beautiful little hook in the paint. Look here, he is using that elbow, just methodically an old school great IQ player. Um, my NBA comparison is Luka Doncic which is high, high praise. I wouldn't say he's diet Luka because I think he falls somewhere in between a mixture of Luka Doncic in his backcourt mate in for the Mavericks, Jalen Brunson. I see a little bit of Jalen Brunson in him. Yeah. Uh, he looks like an NBA vet right now, and, and, and he's, what, 19 years old? Yeah. Uh, everything about him, he's been super-duper solid in the clutch. Uh, he put away Oklahoma two times last week, Wichita State, uh, the game on the line, his game icer, OR. I've seen him uh, be clutch this season. In, in Oklahoma State is the best that they've been since Marcus Smart, and this is the highest rated prospect since Marcus Smart, and I think he is better. What are your some takeaways that you've noticed from Kate Cunningham? As a coach and as you're watching him play, he just gets it. He, you know, when you watch him, he's he's that kind of floor dominator, and he's the he commands respect on that court. Um, I love he's got a quick jumper. Um, I like that he's kind of shifty, and I do like that he actually can be versatile. So you saw him post up. He does that a lot when you see that smaller guy on him, and that's not something that you can teach very well, um, especially with guys like. Trust me, I have guys that I coach. And I'm like, hey, get in there if you're you know you're long, lengthy, get in that post, but they don't want to do it, and he does. And he's got. And I think the one thing I really like about him, he's got a high basketball IQ. He's unselfish. The highest. And when you watch him, you're like, damn, he can fit. And I think, and the thing about him, he's going to be versatile wherever he goes. He can fit in whatever team he has just because of his high IQ. Um, and I really, I think he's improved his three point shooting. And that's something that he's definitely going to, that's just something that he's going to need to improve on a little bit. But he has. And I mean, we'll see what, what happens when he gets to the NBA level because he is shooting college threes and sometimes yeah. that doesn't always transfer. And he's kind of, he's on the line shooter. I haven't seen him shoot many deep shots, so it will be interesting when he gets to the NBA level if he's still hitting this high of a clip from three-pointer because that is obviously part of our game. It's it's a huge, huge, huge integral piece, especially point guard. Our NBA is now, right? Three. Yeah, so that's, that's our life right now. I, I would say um, he's actually a sneaky good defender. Like when you watch him and you watch his tape, I mean, we just watched one game there, but, you know, he, he's got quick hands. He, he gets in front of the defense, and he's not reaching. And when I'm saying that, it was like as he's a good off-ball defender. So when you watch him play, you'll notice, like, like we play, you know, we're, we're playing gaps, and we're, and we're looking at that, and we're, we're trying to make sure that no one goes baseline in our, our defense. You, and you'll see Oklahoma State kind of does the same thing. He's good at getting his hands in deflections, and Coach knows I love deflections. That's my thing, Ben Simmons. Absolutely. So, when you watch him, he gets those deflections really well. He doesn't get in bad spots, and he, and he doesn't really foul very much. And he's aggressive when he's on defense, and, and, but he's smart. He knows where he needs to be. And that's the thing I love watching him. I know defense is one of those things in the NBA that they don't play anymore, but you can notice that he, 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 he his defense tends to go to transition, and he's so good at decision-making. Um, he's one of my favorite prospects we've seen in the last couple of years. I really like what he can do on the court. I love his speed. And as a point guard, now I'm small ass point guard compared to him, but as a point guard, I love watching him play. 
And I, you mentioned a couple things that, that stuck out to me. One was you were mentioning IQ, but you, you related it to defense. And a lot of people put IQ and they put it all on offense. Like yeah. that's what their IQ, but no, a defensive IQ is, is smart and which helps like Luca, who's not a great defender, be serviceable, just getting it, getting there in the right spots. And um, I, I've seen him take a charge at the end of the game to kind of ice a game and a block, a very important block against Oklahoma just last week. Yeah. Um, so he does show that that smart knows anticipate his anticipatory skills are on point. Although he lacks uh, real like quickness and speed, and he might get beat on the perimeter by some of these quicker guards. He's not going to be a liability because of his size and and because he just is. Um, he's just got the game figured out. He plays like an old man, and he's he's just a kid. Um, and then the other the other thing that you pointed out was the was the point guard play. Now he had been a wing his whole career. In senior year, Coach Kevin um, Boyle, who is no stranger to putting uh, pros in the NBA, uh, a la Ben Simmons that we we had mentioned, uh, D'Angelo Russell, uh, Kyrie Irving before that. Um, and he's probably the best high school uh, basketball coach that that that's going right now. He put him at point guard and he stepped up to the plate. He does have to grow as far as a point guard is concerned with his passing. He yeah. only averages three and a half assists and he has the ball in his hands like the entire game. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a part of his point guard development that might be further behind um, some of the other uh, methodically great things he does IQ wise with the basketball. But uh, I think that if we're looking at weaknesses, one, I, I mentioned kind of that the quickness factor defensively and two, like his ability to pass, he's definitely not the best passer in this draft, even though he might be the best point guard prospect. Yeah. I think his vision's great. His decision-making sometimes trying, I think he tries to get it in there too quick and he tries to make that, he make the perfect pass. And that happens with young guys. Trust me. It, it's there. But I would say the one weakness I was going to bring up later, but I'm glad you brought it up is his athleticism. It's not necessarily bad, but it's not, it's not amazing. So when we look at these prospects and we're looking at how big of an athlete they are, I think that he has a very solid floor as an NBA player. Now his ceiling might be limited just by that athleticism, which isn't to say he's going to be a bad prospect. It's just, I think when we look at these guys, we're looking at athleticism or like, okay, where's that ceiling going to be? I just think he has a lower ceiling based on that. And, the, and no, I understand that. Uh, and that's why I, I kind of threw out like a little bit of a, a diet Luca. Cause I don't think he has the potential to be a Luca Doncic, a generational great talent, but I think that this is going to be a, a perennial all-star and I, I, I want to mention one last thing before we move on to the electric Jalen Green, and that is Cade Cunningham's leadership, his leadership ability. Um, he just lo he looks the he looks the part. He acts the part. He's general. He's orchestrating the offense. He puts the ball in his hand, and with his jab steps and his patience and his pump fakes, he gets everybody else in line, and he knows when to turn it on. Yeah. And his leadership by, hey, at the end of the game, give me the ball, and I'm going to get it done. And, um, we saw they were the best high school team, him and Scotty Barnes uh, from Mount Vert uh, Academy the year before. And a lot of had to do with the leadership um, of Cade Cunningham. And that's super, super, super important when we talk about point guards. Yeah. So let's no, let's let's move on to uh, a prospect uh, that you um, have have been privy to understand and know a little bit better. And that's Jalen Green. So I want you to talk a little bit about Jalen. Yeah, you know, Jalen is a kid that I actually got to coach against as a freshman. He dropped 40 points on my team as a freshman. And I remember just seeing this kid like, who the hell is this guy? Um, he came out of nowhere in the Central Valley over here in Fresno. Um, and he's just a bit electric. So he's someone that I've really grown to really just watch and enjoy. I've probably seen more high school games from him than almost my own team. I always went to his games. I saw him win a Valley Championship. Um, and he was electric his junior year. Then he went to, uh, you know, prolific prep his senior year. So I didn't get to watch him his senior year too much. But in the G League right now, you know, he took a little bit of a different direction. He went to the G League, you know, 6'6", 180. He's averaging 17, 4, and 3 in the G League. He's looked pretty good. Um, I, I want to show some highlights from a recent game of his. You know, one area that I think he's improved incredibly is his, is his three-point shooting. That's something that he struggled with in high school. And I know his, his high school coach, Brad Wawlowski, is how you say it. We had him on a podcast, and he talked about how he would be in the gym for two, three hours just working on his shot. And you could tell he's athletic freak. I love watching him play. Like this play right here that you just saw, um, he's just – 
he's just so incredible. And when we talked about it with his coach, he said he would do things in practice that just made him go, who the hell is this guy? Like, I can't believe I coach this guy every day. Um, and when we talk about that athleticism ceiling, that's where it's at. I think he does a pretty good job of creating his own shot. I think he, he definitely needs to work on that a little bit, but he's so long and lengthy and he gets to the free throw line. And in high school, that was one of his big, big things that I always saw him do. He got to the free throw line. He's worked on his catch and shooting. Um, and I think if he can keep adapting that catch and shooting and he, and he's still growing to that, I think that's where his ceiling is going to be amazing. Um, the fact that he's pulling up like that, that's not something that he did in high school. Uh, he worked on his senior year and he had that. So that, that, that right there, what you just saw, just what he was able to do is something that he's definitely improved on. So when I'm looking at draft prospects, I'm saying, okay, who can this guy be? He's just explosive, natural athlete. You know, he's improved every step of the way. He draws fouls at a good rate. He's a great free throw shooter. Um, he's done it at the USA level, US Team USA. He's done it in high school. He went to perfect prep and was playing the best teams in the country um, his senior year. Now he's in the G League and he's dominating the G League I, and he's playing well. Um, and I love kind of what he does. He's an underrated defender because of his length. I actually think he's a pretty good defender. He definitely needs to get a little bit better at just aggressiveness. But overall that, this dude is my guy. Um, and I'm a little biased because I've seen him and, I, and I've seen him. I've watched him play. But He's just somebody that athletically speaking and, and what he can do out there is just, I, I love watching him play basketball. He certainly looks the, looks the part. He, he, he walks in a room. I feel like, and you just, everyone's eyes are gravitating to him and yeah. to I expect a new, what, what is he going to pull out of his bag of tricks next? Um, I'm glad you pointed out the uh, team USA uh, success and being on there since the under 16s yeah. and 17s and um typically you, the united states wins all of those competitions and cade cunningham's been right there with him mm -hmm. and they uh they've done this together scotty barnes as well and i love players that have been developing in the usa team usa something that um you can't say about like in, in anthony edwards you see these these mature players that get better each and every year, like Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green, they've been on the top yeah. list for years now, but they, they keep tickering. They keep getting a little bit better. Uh, you, you point out his three point shooting. Um, yeah. When I look at the numbers and this is going dating back to when he's 16 and all the way through uh, his high school career, it's, it's, it's alarming to me that his, his percentages are so low because his stroke looks so smooth. It like is. one of the player comparisons that I wanted to make is like a, a younger uh, Ray Allen, because of because of that stroke and, and Ray in his heyday and, and when he was younger he was driving to the rim, um, but uh, yeah Jalen Green uh, six six uh, like the ceiling part because of that athleticism he is one of the top lob catchers that I've seen like almost ever they they just run the play for him whether it's high school whether it's uh, uh, Kyle, uh, whether it's Ignite now and he goes up and he gets it no matter who's around uh, wherever that ball is he's got really good anticipatory skills catching loss but also defense he just, he gets steals he gets his hands in there he gets deflections um we can see growth there if, if his defensive iq goes up but he could be a, a good rangy defender he's got to put some he's got to put some weight on he's a little he's a little slender he's 180 right now and and he might get bullied a little bit to, to start things but um i see him developing um getting stronger um, he's got he's got a, a decent build, so it's just about a matter of growing up. I mean, the kid he's still a child, he's still a kid, yeah. right? Um, so I, yeah, go ahead. No, I will. I mean, I, I'm going to say um, he definitely. Uh, I think one area it, it, his three point shooting has gotten better. He's a streaky shooter. I've seen him in high school where he had 10 threes in a row, and you're like, even dude, ignite, ignite playing in a G League, he gets hot. Yeah, yeah. If he does that, he's unguardable. Like I'm telling you guys right now, if he can hit his shots right away. Oh shit! Watch out because he's not going to miss. I've seen it. I've seen it personally. I'm like, oh well, this is going to be a long night for that team. But I have also gone to games where I'm watching him and he's missed like three or four in a row. And then you can tell it gets a little streaky. He gets a little. He rushes it a little bit. Um, but when you see that, you're just like, man, this th this kid can do it. I do think that his ball handling comes. So when you watch him play, if you notice, everything's kind of to the right. 
And when you and, and and he tends to when he's going, he will kind of shift to the right, shift to the right, shift to the right a little bit. Um, but overall, I mean, he'll learn, he'll get better at that, and that's just because of the, con- the competition he's played against. But I absolutely love him, and I think that I think that he's definitely there. As far as comparisons go, we're always trying to figure out comparisons. I like a Brandon Ingram comparison, not for his size, not for not necessarily for his length and what he has, just kind of his. He, he likes his mid range game. He likes to pull up. Uh, he probably needs to attack a little bit more. And so I, I like that comparison. I went with a little uh, – I know Wiggins kind of get thrown out there, but, but because of his slender build and because of his athleticism and leaping, yeah. I went with a, a higher engage, higher motor, higher engaged uh, Andrew Wiggins. And, I mean, yeah. Andrew Wiggins is a, a, a you know a 20-point scorer in our league at some, time, at, at some point. He got a max contract. So, like, it's saying, it's saying a lot, but, like, with a higher mode, that's his one thing that he's critiqued more than anything. And I think – Jalen just likes the game or care cares a little bit more. Um, but you you said about the streak, and I noticed that in one of the games of the Ignite that I was watching when they were undefeated and they played against uh, the Wizards uh, G League team, and he had a rough start. He missed a couple shots, and it feels like it felt like he almost got like he almost disappeared yeah. in the game. And that's one them not putting him in the right spots and getting him rolling. But two, it was kind of like, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't kind of his day and he just kind of was out of it uh, more so. But then I've seen other games where he's gotten hot and just completely taken over the game. So yeah. I will have to I did mark down the the ball handling. It's got it's he's got to get better. He does. You 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 point out he goes kind of to the right. He does the the back and forth. Yeah. He does a little hang, hezzy dribble and. He gets into his rhythm and he can almost shoot over anybody because he get, he jumps really high when he shoots. So I like that, but he doesn't have any moves. Like we were watching Cade Cunningham. He's in and out. He's behind the back. He's spin move. Jalen is all downhill. He's right, left, and then he's quick first step. And then he gets to the rim and he finishes and he's got an ability to just be in the air forever. But he doesn't have any moves. He does, And the people develop that. Like Bradley Beal didn't have a lot of dribbling moves. Now he's got every move in, that, that you can think of. Uh, so I think that his ball handling for sure needs to improve. Um, but he did lead as far as he was the first one to announce, I'm going to do the G League thing. And then it was Jonathan Kaminga who reclassed and then joined him, yeah. Isaiah Todd and Knicks. And I don't know if those guys come unless Jalen Green says, nope, I'm I'm going to be the first guy. And he's playing against – he's playing with Jared Jack right now. He's playing against guys that are really damn good. Nico uh, Minion. Uh, maybe I chopped up a last name. Uh, shout out Coach Coleman, but uh, maybe I chopped his name up. But that kid is amazing in the in the Warriors uh, G League development league. Uh, Kevin yeah. Porter Jr. He's playing against pros. All those guys are going to be in the NBA by the end of the year or by next year. So I, this is going to this is the first year of the G League development, and um, I think he's been getting better every year. I mean, he's he's practicing like a pro, and I think it's going to help out. Yeah. No, I think so too. And I, you know, when we come down to who do we want more, I tend to side on Jalen just because I think that his ceiling's higher. So I love Cade. I think Cade will be a great pro- prospect. Jalen, I feel like could be that superstar prospect. I think Cade is that all-star prospect, right? So when we're looking at it from that perspective and I, I'm under a little bit of hometown bias and bias a little bit, but I think Jalen could definitely be that. I love both these kids though. And I think that we could see Jalen. I saw him going like five, six, seven. I, I still think he could be top two pick. I, I think that I've seen him some mocks, and we haven't really gotten a mock season yet for the NBA yet, but I think that he's going to solidify himself as a top two basketball player in this draft. Well, and I've seen mocks are kind of all over the place. Some people have Mobley. Some people have um, Cunningham. Yeah. Uh, some people have Suggs. Uh, I've seen – oh, I've, some people have Kaminga. I haven't seen Jalen in the number one spot, but I haven't seen him outside the top top five, top – I haven't seen him outside the top seven, but – I. I rarely see him outside the top five, yeah. uh, and I hear you on the ceiling, and that's a great point. I mean, I, I he's just a smooth operator, and he just he looks the part. But I I've been huge on Cunningham ever since I laid eyes on him, and I just because of his IQ, because it's smart, because of his just uh, ability to control the game, I, he is going to be a bona fide All Star. He is the surest thing. I would have took him number one this year. Uh, and, and I, I, you see how great LaMelo ball is and you might go back and forth on that now watching how yeah. quick it was for him and his, his ceiling being higher than Cade. But I just was like, I want Cade cause I can, I can trust him. I think that he, he is an NBA pro. He had his, a, a daughter, right. And you know how it, being a young fatherhood that can, that can mature you 
uh, to the point. So I think of all those these top fro- prospects, they're all intriguing. But even if I had a big or I didn't, I had a big opening. I, I, I still instead of Evan Mobley, give me the sure thing. Give me the guy that reminds me of Luca and can orchestrate in today's offense and appears to be a, a, a threat on the perimeter, but also everywhere a three level score and a, and a good IQ defender. So I I I tend to side with Cade. I understand you're Jalen. I do like Jalen too. So this is not me trashing like Anthony Edwards. We 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 both discussed before we got on here that there's something missing with him. His maturity is yeah. Yeah, he's. I don't care. He just to me. He said. Oh, he said. Quote like, yeah. I don't even watch basketball. You know, I just yeah. play. Like, what? What do you do? This is he just. Said, this is your job. Yeah. When he said that, I was kind of out. Uh, I want hoopers that care about the sport and me guys too. that really want to grow. And I'm a Kobe guy. So if and I, I feel like both these guys have that Kobe mentality. Um, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. You know, Kobe's my guy. Um, R.I.P. I love Kobe. So Kobe, Kobe for me is that guy. Um, and so when I look at these prospects, I'm saying, okay, who has that mentality, right? That Mamba mentality they talk about. I think both these guys do because they live and breathe basketball. And so that's why I love both these prospects. But I've seen Jalen literally work, 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 work because I've just been around it. So that's why I'm, I, I've tied myself to him. But let us know. Let us know what you guys think in the in the comments. Absolutely. So like, subscribe, let us know, let us know who else you want us to break down. Um, we will be talking about Jalen Suggs. We will be talking about Evan Mobley. We'll be talking about Jonathan Kamunga. Heck, we'll be talking about Chet Holmgren and uh, Imani Bates. We love those prospects as well. We go all the way down to, you know, to Marcus Johnson Jr. We're looking at freshmen, right? And <laughs> um, we would love to, to hear from you. This is Triple Play Fantasy Basketball. This is Coach's Corner, and we'll see you next time.